Based in Staunton, Virginia, Hudson Dalton has been making some of the most powerful, finely crafted American acoustic guitars since around 1995. On today's show, I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favorite guitars from this boutique guitar manufacturer. Hey TAC family, this is episode 280 of the Acoustic Tuesday show, a show packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more progress, fulfillment, and joy from your acoustic guitar journey. Throughout today's episode, I will be sprinkling in some acoustic news you can use, which includes a newly completed humongous piece of guitar art, some boots to die for, and much more, plus some updated guitar signals for you to gaze upon, but first, my favorite Huss and Dalton guitars. Now, you may may not be familiar with this guitar brand and I'm here to tell you, you need to be. Because they make some of the finest, traditionally inspired guitars brought up to date. That's not a great description, but that's what I got for you. Now, before I dig into my countdown, and it is a true countdown, starting with a darn good guitar and working up to my absolute favorite Husson Dalton of all time period, no questions asked. I want to share with you a quick story, something that happened in the last couple months to me. I do own a Huss and Dalton guitar. I won't tell you which right now. And I was experiencing this rattle, okay? And it was driving me crazy and it seemed to be getting worse. Now, I took a mirror inside the guitar and tried to figure out what the heck was going on. Now, I do have a pickup installed in this guitar and the the... I checked the wire, I checked everything. I couldn't figure out what it was. And I thought, you know what? Uh, This has a bolt on neck. Maybe the bolt's loose. I don't know. Uh, Tried to diagnose it myself. In the meantime, I was in contact with Huss and Dalton and they were so very kind and took so much time in helping me diagnose this problem. And ultimately, we couldn't figure it out. I even sent a video trying to describe it. So uh, it came time to send it in for further diagnosis. So I sent the guitar in. They let me know that they received the guitar safely. And upon further review, it was actually a wire from the pickup. Now, I immediately felt very stupid. I felt very stupid because uh, in my emails, I assured them that this was not a pickup wire. Turns out it was. And I have to tell you, they were so kind to me, so responsive, and they never made me feel stupid. They never made me feel dumb. They just said, hey, this happens. It's all squared away. We'll send the guitar back to you. Voila, I got the guitar back and I love it. So I just wanted to share that with you because not only is this a company that I admire, this is a company with a very human touch, a company that has humans working for it that truly care about their instruments and truly care about the people that play them. It made a huge mark on me and I wanted to share that with you. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the countdown. Coming in at number five, is the Huss and Dalton's Huss and Dalton Crossroads. (laughs) Huss and Dalton is not plural. Uh, Coming in at number five is the Huss and Dalton Crossroads. This is a phenomenal small bodied guitar. This is a no frills, think L00-ish type guitar, but with a deeper body. The body depth on this guitar is about four and a quarter inches and it is comfortable to play and it is powerful. Mahogany back and side, spruce top, kind of a a, a quote unquote basic guitar on paper, but whoa, talk about power behind this thing. If you dig finger style, if you actually have a lighter touch, this guitar is a fitting match because it's very responsive and it produces a quite even tonal spectrum. Here's how it sounds. Now, I do want to mention that since Huss and Dalton is a custom shop, when you look for these guitars in the wild, there may be some variations on the specs that I talk about during today's show. I'm basing these off of the standard specs from a standard 
untouched, uncustomized model. Models that I have played out in the wild. So just keep that in mind as you're out looking at various Huss and Dalton guitars. They may vary slightly because, well, you can tweak these guitars if you order direct from Huss and Dalton, or if you go to a, a dealer that orders direct from Huss and Dalton. Okay, moving on down the line. Coming in at number four is the TDR Pilgrim. I will say this, the way that this guitar looks is what initially attracted me to it. It is aesthetically stunning. The way this guitar sounds is what kept me there. A larger sound hole, a rosewood dreadnought, and just a powerhouse. I think with a lot, a lot of times with rosewood dreadnoughts, you get this really great set of overtones that almost confuses the guitar, almost muddies it up a little bit. Now this guitar has a larger sound hole and this guitar is extremely composed for a big bodied rosewood guitar. It's powerful, it's direct, it is a perfect companion to any bluegrass setting and here's how it sounds. Coming in at number three is a guitar that's about as traditional as traditional can get. Coming in at number three is the TDM, your classic mahogany dreadnought. This guitar is dry, it is crispy, it is direct, and it has power. Man, oh man, does it have power. We're talking solid fundamental. You play single notes, you play flat picking runs on this guitar, and it is going to deliver in spades. I first heard this guitar in Jeremy the Guitar Hunter's hands, and immediately I thought to myself, I need to try one of those, it's on my list. I had a chance to try it, not that one, a different one, and it did not disappoint. Okay, here's how it sounds. <laughs> Coming in at number two on my list is the one that got away. The Triple O SP 12 fret slotted headstock, a finger style guitar player's dream. A little bit wider at the nut, a very comfortable neck. And I should take an aside and say this, every Husson Dalton I have ever played has quite possibly the most comfortable neck ever. Not sure the profile that they use. And in fact, I may, wear, I may very well have played guitars with multiple profiles. Every single one, the neck has felt like butter in my hands. I feel as though I've played like a hot knife slicing through butter. Anyways, that's an aside. The number two guitar is the Triple O SP. And this guitar, I had one. One came in used to Music Villa when I worked there. I did a demo of it. Immediately afterwards, I put it on layaway. I traded a bunch of stuff for it, and I absolutely loved this guitar. Well, as a working musician at the time, I fell on some hard times, and I had to sell this guitar. And man, was that a sad day. Was that a sad, sad day. Um, this guitar has forever left an impression on me, and I guarantee you, if you play one, it will leave an impression on you. The one that I had was Rosewood Back and Sides. It had an Adirondack spruce top, and wow, did this guitar deliver. Beautiful bloom and lush overtones that were supportive of the guitar, and like I said, just a finger-style guitar player's dream. Oh, just a beautiful guitar. Well, without further ado, here's how it sounds. Number one guitar on my list from Huss and Dalton is the one that I currently own, the L13 Crossroads Deluxe. 
This is another small body guitar. This is another guitar that is a deeper body, a little bit over four and a quarter inches. The back and sides are maple. Okay, they're maple. Now I have said this before, I never really liked maple back and sides on a guitar. I just, I just haven't. Now, with the exception, I have a custom Martin that has bird's eye maple back and sides. I feel like it's an anomaly. This guitar is also an anomaly because if you were to ask me, hey, Tone, um, you're gonna love a small bodied guitar with maple back and sides, I would start laughing at you because I've always felt that maple is so crispy and so articulate that on a small body guitar, it's just a little too much. It's a little too crispy. It's a little too uh, ice pick in the forehead kind of a situation. That's kind of a Telecaster reference, but that's, that's how I kind of uh, uh, would, would imagine this guitar would sound. But this guitar does have that deeper body. Again, a little bit over four and a quarter inches. It has flame maple back and sides. And this guitar is robust bust and it has body and it is fantastic for finger style guitar. Fantastic because you get this wonderful clarity and, and I'm not talking about with finger picks. I'm talking about with pads, right? The pads of your fingers, you're still able to attain this warmth yet it's defined and it has wonderful clarity. Each note speaks the neck. Well, it's super comfortable to play. And I just got to say, it looks beautiful. Um, it joins the body, the neck joins the body at the 13th fret. Okay, so it's kind of a nod to a, a Nick Lucas style guitar from Gibson. And um, wow, I gotta tell you, this knocks the socks off any modern made Nick Lucas style guitar reissue, whether it's from Gibson or some other company. This one is the top of the heap, in my humble opinion. Um, the, the nut width is comfortable. I'm actually not sure exactly what it is. It's just comfortable. Uh, let's see, the nut width is uh, an inch and three quarter. So pretty standard wider nut width and um, yeah. <laughs> A beautiful looking guitar, a beautiful sounding guitar. It actually reacts really well to a flat pick. And since I own it, I figured I'd just bring it into the studio and play it for you. So here is the Husson Dalton L13 Crossroads Deluxe, the best Husson Dalton made right now, in my opinion. Those are my favorite Husson Dalton guitars, but now I wanna hear from you. What is your A number one favorite Husson Dalton? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Now, uh, let's go ahead and move on to acoustic news you can use. And this first little nugget I have for you is one that may not seem related to guitar playing, but it is. I'm gonna read the quote to you first and then I'll dig in as to why it's associated with guitar playing, why it's associated with your guitar playing. The quote comes from Mark Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Blank. Uh, here's what he says. There's no rule saying you have to read every word on every page of a book in the exact order it's written. You can jump around, start and stop a book at any time based on what's most useful to you. This is life, not a high school exam. Couldn't have said it any better myself, which is probably why I never said it in the first place. But I read this and I thought to myself, man, that's true. I always feel so locked into a specific book and I feel like I have to finish it, even though a lot of times I don't like the book. I'm just too deep in it to really back out anymore. The same is true for learning songs. If you're in the middle of a song and you're like, I actually don't enjoy this, bail on it. That's not bad, you haven't failed. There's no rule that says you have to finish everything you start when it comes to guitar. Part of the joy of playing guitar and learning is that you're trying new stuff. Follow the things that resonate with you. Ditch the things that don't. That's okay, guitar playing should be fun. I want you to enjoy it. So to make it enjoyable, do the things you enjoy. So kind of a cool little relationship there between that quote and your guitar journey. Next up on my um, little news list here is Ariel Posen, again. 
Um, one of my favorite guitar players, one of my new favorite guitar players, um, had a chance to meet him when I was in Chicago for the Fretboard Summit. And what a joy seeing him play, having a chance to say hi to him after the show. Well, he just announced that, uh, well, by the way, let me back up. He's got two of my new favorite guitar instrumental albums that have ever been recorded, Mile End and Mile End 2. He just announced that Mile End 2, the tabs, the transcriptions for the songs on Mile End 2 are going to be available on his website. And how cool is that? Because these songs are just plain awesome and you can learn them for yourself. Let's go ahead and look at a quick little teaser of him playing a song with the tab going on the bottom. Pretty awesome feature, I really dig it. Speaking of Ariel Posen, Paul David's guitarist, YouTuber extraordinaire just did a wonderful sit down interview with Ariel. And Ariel talks about some of the ways that he composes using triads. This is an incredibly beneficial video on so many levels. It's inspiring, it shows a little bit of the creative process, but it also starts to unlock the fretboard, something I found incredibly useful. I wanted to share it with you. Here's a little piece of that video. Because that's the melody. You could also go I don't, chestnut and then to an A and that's it. Um, I think of everything in numbers. That just helps me transpose things faster. So if you said, hey, can we play it in G instead? And you just think in numbers in terms of the one chord and then to the two. Exactly, okay. the Nashville number system. Yep. Yep. It's beyond guitar. It's yep. like more thinking of the music side than, um, you know, oh shoot, what fret or what this. Have you ever heard of the artist Ron Sweeney? I certainly hadn't, so I wouldn't be surprised if you never heard of him either. Well, you're going to learn about him right now. I just did and you need to know because he is the individual responsible for the Groon Guitars mural. If you go to Nashville, and you go to Grun Guitars, take a step back and look at this mural. It is beautiful. I've seen pictures of it and I cannot wait to see it in person because wow, the detail is striking. Here's a quick story as to how the mural came to be and all the work that went into it. He says his toughest challenge was making sure that all the difficult work made a simple statement. When it, when it comes when it comes to the fine craftsmanship in these instruments, they, they leave nothing out. Like, it's all there. So, in, in this case, with this project, this had to be something really special. Like, this has to say something. This has to speak for itself. This has to say everything that's on the inside of the building. Ron Sweeney says the Grun Guitars mural was definitely challenging, and he's glad to be finished but he's honored to have been asked to paint it. He says he wanted to achieve something impossible and feels like he did just that. Even though the work was tiresome, Sweeney says it was incredibly rewarding and meaningful. I just really want to just leave, leave behind a legacy that, that I was here. I actually made a mark and I, I did it here. And, and that to me is my reward. Everybody loves a good banjo joke, plain and simple. Everyone loves a good banjo joke. Oh, speaking of banjos, this just popped in my head. Remember last week when I talked about the Pizca banjo raffle? Today's the last day. It's the last day. This is my reminder to you to visit Pisca Banjos and spend 20 bucks on a raffle ticket. You could win a stellar, stellar, stellar banjo. Okay, back to the banjo joke thing. You know, everybody loves a good banjo joke. It, it's, it's clear. Uh, banjo jokes throughout history have always drawn a laugh and always made fun of eh, a rather odd instrument, one that I have a soft spot for. Anyways, uh, the Milk Carton Kids are no exception. If you've ever seen the Milk Carton Kids live, you know that you're in for a treat, both musically and comedically. Um, comically? Comedically? Whatever the right word is. They have the best stage banter I've ever heard. It is unmatched. 
And they tell a banjo joke here that is top of the heap for me. Here it is. Now, when I first started learning to play the banjo, like the first like 10 or 15 songs I learned, they all had somebody die in them. <laughs> and so I just figured that's what banjo songs were. So when I started writing my own banjo songs, I just was killing people left and right. <laughs> okay, let's venture on back to the world of acoustic guitar. I've got a few updated guitar snows I want to share with you from our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. The first one comes from Buck Wicker from Beaver Creek, Ohio, and he says this. Hey Tony, I uploaded my guitar snow a few months back, but when you announced that you were doing a vintage guitar show next week, I thought I'd upload a photo that I did a few weeks ago. I'm a photographer as well as a guitar geek. I own a 1975 Martin D35. I was inspired to do a self-portrait hugging my D35. I was inspired by a photograph done by Jim McGuire of Bill Monroe doing the same thing with his mandolin. I thought I'd share it with my fellow vintage guitar players, and yes, I do love my 1975 Amber Tone Martin D35 that much. So cool, so cool. Buck, thank you so much for submitting that picture and a great nod to a very famous picture of Bill Monroe for certain. Uh, you did a great job capturing the same, the same vibe. Uh, the next guitar snow update comes from Tom Duber from Columbus, Ohio to Ohio folks. I'm sorry that the Columbus Blue Jackets are not having a good year. I've always have a, I always have had a soft spot for the Columbus Blue Jackets, but um, yeah, they're kind of in the same boat as the Hawks this year. Not good. Yeah, speaking of, you know, I've been thinking about getting a different jersey, a non-Black Hawks jersey. My thought process is this. I'm a goalie fan. Maybe I should just start collecting jerseys from my favorite goalies. It seems a little bit more rewarding right now since the Hawks are just this bottom of the barrel in the cellar trying to figure out what it's like to be above ground. Not, not really hopeful that they're going to get above ground either. Uh, anyways, that's a side note. If you have any recommendations for me, uh, throw them in the comments below. I've been thinking about a Minnesota Wild Mark Andre Fleury jersey. I've been thinking about an Andre Vasilevsky jersey. I've been thinking about a Shesterkin jersey. I really like I really like Jonathan Quick. Yeah, lots of you know lots of problems. Clearly, I need help. Um, so uh, let me know in the comments below. What's your favorite goalie? What jersey should I entertain getting next? I'm sorry, Tom. Back to Tom and his updated guitar snow. This one comes from Tom Duber of Columbus, Ohio. He says this, Since my previous guitar snow submission, I've added several more, but today I wanted to share with you the Koa family in my current arsenal. First up, a Taylor GT K21E Grand Theater in solid Koa. Next up, a Taylor GS Mini in Koa. Next, a Snail Brand Tenor Ukulele in Koa and Acacia. And then lastly, a Koaloha Concert Ukulele in Solid Koa. And in parting, he says, yes, I like me some Koa. Well, that is quite clear and for good reason. What a beautiful, beautiful tone wood. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Buck. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, I like Buck, I like Tom, I want my guitar snow featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show, or I want to update my guitar snow. Everything you need is in the is in the description below this video. There's a link to purchase a guitar snow shirt. There's a link to submit a picture of your guitar snow. Make sure to get yourself a guitar snow shirt. That's step one. Step number two, take a picture amongst all your guitars with your guitar snow shirt on, and then submit it using that link in the description. Okay, on to, uh, well, why don't you go ahead and take out your guitar? Let's see what the TAC family is working on today. Every single week within Tony's Acoustic Channel, we rotate through the five essential skills involved in learning any song, making songs, making learning songs that much easier. On Mondays, there's a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. Today is Tuesday. The TAC fam is working on a guitar lick, and here is what they're working on. Your Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge is in open D tuning today. It's a great blues lick in the key of D, and it's named Buttered Popcorn because I can't think of anything better than sitting down and watching a movie and having a huge bowl of buttered popcorn. And this lick is like a huge bowl of buttered popcorn. It's that good. Uh, let me go ahead and play it for you. And then what I want to do is show you how to use this lick to completely play 
a 12 bar blues. Wholly, solely, wholly and solely based on this lick. Okay, here's how the lick sounds. It's pretty fun. Now, remember, you have to be in open D tuning for this lick, and that is drop your low E string to a D, your A string stays the same, D string stays the same, G string drops to an F sharp, your B string drops to an A, your high E string drops to a D. Okay, that's where this lick will work. So if you tried to play this in standard tuning, it's probably gonna sound a little bit goofy. Now, TAC fam, if you wanna learn this note for note, this is your daily challenge. Just log in, click Start Challenge. That'll take you directly to the teaching video. Once you're done with that, move to the play along video, adjust it to a speed that's comfortable for you, and don't forget to open up that tab in a separate window by clicking on that tab icon in the lower right-hand corner. Okay, so as I mentioned, this lick is a wonderful one uh, for two reasons. Uh, it sounds cool. I think that's the first reason. The second reason is you can take this lick and move it. It's completely closed. It's a closed position lick, meaning there are no open strings here, right? I'm just playing half of it, but there's no open strings. That being the case, you can move it wherever you want. Pretty cool. I mean, you can literally move it wherever you want. And the note that you land on will tell you what chord it works over. So up here, I'm landing on a D note. This will work over a D chord. Well, the cool thing about open D tuning is that on the fifth fret, you have your four chord or the G chord. And on your seventh fret, you have your five chord, in this case, the A chord. So you have all the ingredients to play a 12 bar blues. And if I play the lick here, spanning the third and fifth fret, the note I land on is a G. That means it works over a G chord. And if I play that same lip, lick, lip, play that same lick spanning the fifth and the seventh, uh, fifth and the seventh fret, I'm landing on an A note works over an A chord. So you can effectively play an entire 12 bar blues. Now this is a two measure lick. So you'd play the lick two times over a D chord, one time over a uh, G chord, one time over the next D chord, uh, half the lick over the A chord, half the lick over the G chord, and then one time through on that final D chord. Um, let me go ahead and play it. I think it'll make a lot more sense when I play it. Okay, here's how it sounds in a 12 bar blues format. I'll play it slow, so if you wanna play along with me, feel free to go ahead. There it is, 12 bar blues based on one lick. You learn something once, you move it around. It's a great way to experiment. And speaking of experimentation, there's this myth, there's this common misconception that you have to know what you're doing to experiment. Now let's think about that statement for a second. You have to know what you're doing to experiment. That's like a cart before the horse kind of a situation, right? You experiment so that you start to know what you're doing, right? I hear this from, from uh, players that are first starting on the guitar, players that maybe are a little intimidated by, by some concepts on the guitar, maybe, maybe alternate tunings is one for you. And they say, oh, I, 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 gotta, I gotta get a little bit better before I try that. It's, that's reversed. 
you have to try that in order to get a little bit better. And I'm not saying some of this stuff is not intimidating because it very well can be because you've never done it before. But if you push yourself outside that comfort zone, outside your comfort zone, if you push yourself to experiment and try something new, that is what gets you better. That is what helps you achieve that progress. So remember, it's never the wrong time to experiment. By experimenting, by trying new things, that's what actually allows you to get better. So here's me giving you full permission to experiment away. Sound crummy. Try things that are totally off the wall. It's okay to, to make weird sounds. We're all learning this thing, and the best way to learn is by doing. So go forth and do and experiment and try. It's second dose of acoustic news you can use time. And I've got some rapid fire selections for you right now. First up is this guitar fire pit. I don't even know how I found it. It was fed to me from the account Bluegrass Life. I think all of us need this in our backyard. Um, just plain cool. And on fire, it looks even cooler. Uh, next up is a pair of boots. Now, this is just awesome. This is from BG Today, the Instagram account BG Today. And um, they're a pair of cowboy boots. Now, I'm not a cowboy boot wearer, but for somebody who is, and for somebody who's a bluegrass fan as well, these are Satan is Real boots based on the cover of the Leuven Brothers album, Satan is Real. Now, I love this, this kind of series of events. First of all, the Satan is Real album cover is one of the best all-time album covers ever. I do believe they achieved the fire on that album cover by burning tires. Not 100% sure. If you know for a fact, let me know. It could be a myth. I don't know. But either way, it's a cool little factoid that I like to think is real. So the album cover is cool in and of itself. Some years ago, I want to say maybe 10 now, Martin Guitar did a series of, I believe, D28s that had this album cover printed on the front of it, the Satan is Real album cover. Now that's cool too. And now here are the cowboy boots. And I believe they're by Lisa Sorrell. Not Sorrell like the, 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 the winter boots, but Sorrell, S-O-R-R-E-L-L. Anyways, uh, the quote or the caption says, bluegrass from leather to fabric. Um, so cool. Now, if you're a true fan, you could be playing the Leuven Brothers album, Satan is Real. Also playing the Martin D28 Leuven Brothers model with Satan is Real printed on the top while wearing the Satan is Real boots. If you want to do that, send me a picture. Please, please, if there's anybody out there who does that, I need to be aware of it and I need to have a picture because it you need it's just cool it's just cool it's like a triple whammy like a like a triple deal i don't know i don't know what the name like a trifecta trifecta that's what i was looking for okay back on the music train here uh coulter wall just recorded a new tune previously unreleased it's named i think it's named the last loving words yeah the last loving words and he filmed this tune live uh, via Dusty Vaccaro. Not familiar with that account, not familiar with that uh, uh, filming group, if that is, but I'm not familiar with that YouTube channel either. But nonetheless, uh, this is a great moment captured and um, just love Coulter Wall between the voice, the minimalistic guitar playing, and just um, the power of his songwriting. Here's a quick little snippet. Goodbye, good night, so long, my friend. I'm here in New Mexico. Where my trail is, big on me with kindness. These were last loving words. And finally, I want to read you something from Andrew Marlin of Watch House, formerly named Mandolin Orange, and now of the band Mighty Poplar. The bluegrass, su I shouldn't say bluegrass, but kind of bluegrass. The acoustic supergroup that I mentioned last week on the show that's coming out with a new album, I believe it is released... Gosh, it's either released the 31st of March or the 24th of March. Either way, it needs to be on your radar. Um, he says this about playing with the band, and I thought it was just a great quote. We're going to hear the song that he's playing by himself here in a moment. It's up on the divide, uh, one of the new Might Mighty Poplar songs. But what he says in this post really got me thinking about the magic of live performance. But he also notes something very important, that during live performances, we should take note of how magical it is to be a part of them whether you're listening or playing 
uh, in the band or by yourself on stage, right? Just, just take a second to note how truly magical and amazing it is. Here's what Andrew had to say. When I play with this band, referring to Mighty Poplar, of course, when I play with this band, I am suspended somewhere between meditation and fierce mental engagement. Before making the record, I was so fixated on carrying my own weight that I completely overlooked how weightless one can feel in a band like this. Can't wait to float around on stage with these guys come May. Inaugural Mighty Poplar tickets on sale today. Now, this was taken a couple weeks back, so uh, make sure to check out their website for some tour dates. Again, starting in May, it looks like they're hitting the West Coast, Colorado, Arizona, California, uh, Washington, Oregon all throughout the month of May. Uh, this is one you're going to want to see. This is one you're going to want to see. And um, this tune that he's about to play that I'm going to share with you is Beautiful Alone. Imagine the full band behind this. Just imagine. Just just imagine. And if you can't imagine, look it up on YouTube. You'll be able to hear it. I featured it last week on the show. Anyways, here's Andrew playing the song Up on the Divide. Go and up to settle, old me. We'll drive up the cattle where the snows used to be. I ain't much for nothing, still I can ride. And the springtime's coming up on the divide. Springtime's coming up on the divide. And on those beautiful notes that have us all hopeful for spring, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, yes, indeed, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week on the show, I'm going to be showing you proven ways to perfect your guitar picking. I'm going to go through some exercises right here on the show to help you wrangle your flat pick, to help you with timing, to help you with tone, to help you with accuracy. I'm going to show you some things that will no doubt help you out and help you become a fierce, fiery flat picker. I was trying to think of some more alliteration I could throw in there, but you got to be careful with those Fs. Anyways, that's what's happening next week on the show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. And please do remember this. Your success on the guitar, however you define it for yourself, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers to you and guitar geeks unite.